the differences has uh, you know between both benchmarks has been as stark as ever now i'm going to give you a bit of a, of a historical backdrop to this if you compare us light crude uh, with brent um, let's say let's say let's do a direct linear uh, comparison between the west texas intermediate and uh, and brent and if you look at both these global benchmarks and we go back to say about 2008 or 09 um, at that point in time a lot of uh, the producers including opec uh, said that we will uh, you know we will take brent as a global proxy uh, as a as a global proxy uh, benchmark and brent's popularity at that point in time soared because the disconnect between the us market and the global markets was was slowly slowly materializing as more shale oil and tight oil uh, came onto the scene in in north america so a lot of people uh, decided Brent uh, was the, the benchmark uh, they'll choose as a proxy. Uh, and Brent's popularity climbed on from there. And slowly the disconnect between light crude, uh, US light crude and Brent uh, started uh, getting wider and wider and wider. Starting about $5 onto 10 onto 15 And there was one point in time a couple of years ago where Brent crude was had was selling at a premium of almost twenty five dollars to uh, to light crude. That that's how big the disconnect was. You look at it now, uh, we're down to about three dollars. So that that tells you the leveling out of the market. So what has happened here? The the difference between both benchmarks uh, became very stark at one point, where where the U.S. had a had a sort of a domestic uh, glut. Now there is now that there is a global glut, there is a, a, a coming together of Brent uh, and uh, and US Light, and how it is is that it, we've come down from about twenty five dollars in a short space couple of years to roughly about a little over three dollars plus, and that that's how stark it is. Now, for people who are are trading on it, they they need to be they need to be be really careful. Now the wider macroeconomic dynamic if you if you're you know waiting to put a spread on um, on Brent or, or US light the wider macroeconomic dynamic always figures in it, it has a bearing on both benchmarks yet at the same time always remember that Brent will be a, at least at least for 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 the medium term still be the the global proxy benchmark so it will have some sort of premium uh, to US light crude and that premium can be large can be small as, as, I've, as I've just explained it was pretty large a few years ago and it's uh, pretty insignificant at the current moment in time what my advice to people uh, to spread betters uh, would be that look at the whole week look at adopt a cutoff point now I'll tell you what, what cutoff points I adopt I have put an instruction on my data terminal that it will download uh, the I will save the price of oil at 9:30 GMT every Friday. I use that as as a sort of it's not it's not very, it's not something scientific. I'd rather use that as my own personal assessment cutoff point. I then reflect on what the previous Friday uh, close was. As, as I have uh, at the cutoff point that I have adopted and so on and so forth and and I can, I can tell you for a fact that if, if you look at all the Fridays going back say the entire quarter I've seen a declining trend every Friday the, the level has been constantly lower than it was going all the way back to the 3rd of October 2014 and how do you then place your bets according to that you, you, you look at the wider trends, you see the declining trends, and then you make a considered daily call. You know, you, you, can't, you can't go net long or short if you, you, know, if you, if you are not actually entering the futures market. Uh, on a, for spread betters, they need to make daily calls. And the daily calls, uh, the, the way I see them is that not every day the oil price would, would go down, but if there is a downward trend and that has kicked in Monday, it is quite likely to, to last uh, for the duration of the week and you have to assess what is happening the previous evening to make your morning's call. And that, is how, that is how I would, uh, I would interpret the trends. The same logic 
pretty much the same logic applies to uh, to us light as well the one thing that you need to remember with uh, with us light is is that you need to take into account you need to take into account what is happening in in the us in terms of uh, consumptions now let's say uh, hypothetically there there are high points you need to look at uh, you can you need to look at the the us eia inventory data it comes out it comes out on a fairly regular basis you need to monitor that you need to look at certain points in in the festive calendar in the states when is the motoring season when is the family driving season you look at all of that and then you square it against what the eia is is publishing what is what what does the government data indicate uh, about supply and demand and then place your your bet accordingly that's the that's the one variation uh, that is between when if you look at look at brent and you look at uh, look at us uh, us light brent would wouldn't well essentially it is it is a uh, a sort of Anglo-Norwegian, it has an Anglo-Norwegian historic connection, but it is a global proxy. So Brent would show immediate uh, effects of what is happening in the wider world than, uh, than US light. And at the present moment in time, I would say there is, there is still a bit of correction to happen. But that said, if you look at, if you spread uh, over five days and you look at your, your calls each day, uh, it's not a given that every day the oil price would, would go down. It will depend on what the news was the previous evening and what sort of support it would give. But I would say, I would say it, if a downward trend has started at the, at the beginning of the week, it is likely to be, to be reflected uh, come the Friday. So if, you, if, you're, if, you're hedging, if you're hedging your bets either ways, there might be the odd day that it might, you, know, you might get the call wrong. But in, when, the, when there, are, there are wider bearish sentiments, you are, if you invest carefully, which is what we always advise, uh, you are more than likely to, uh, to make, a, make a buck or two.